Today, it's all about hats. Welcome to Ask Oki. Hats are a subject that have been heavily requested by our audience. And so we thought we'd do a series, not just a single segment, but a series on hats. However, today we're going to just look at an overview. We're going to look at different types of hats and just discuss them generally. In further segments, we'll go into certain more detail, how to buy them, how to store them, how to care for them, and so on and so forth. So let's get right into it. Understanding hats. What are they and what are their uses? And how do they enhance your appearance overall? Now, we all understand the use of accessories such as ties and pocket squares and other things. And what accessories do is that they introduce an element of color sometimes, or an element of uniqueness to your dress. Very often, we can use accessories to create our own signature, be it our ties or our pocket squares or how we knot our ties or what color pocket squares we wear or what type of shoes we wear. Some go for colorful shoes, others go for more staid, uh, staple shoes. Hats are a missed opportunity, in my view, to create your own signature. Now, I also think besides or beyond creating your own signature, a hat just sort of completes an outfit. Some call it a lid, and that's for a reason. It essentially puts a lid or a top on the entire outfit, just like your shoes, which are equally important, ground the outfit. And so I believe that a hat is a real opportunity to not just create your own signature, but to complete the look. Now, let's talk about types of hats and styles. To my left are uh, an array of hats. Also to my side here and behind me. We're going to start from the far right corner over here. I'm going to pick up each of these hats and we're going to talk about each of them in very, very high level, at a very high level, so to speak. And in further segments, we can go further into discussion on each type of hat, where and how to wear them, and in fact, how they are made. We are also going to talk about the kind of fabrics they are made of, and so on and so forth. But let's start with examining each of the hats. And I'm going to start from my far left corner. Now, I have here what is called a pork pie. Now, the hat maker that I purchased this from, Optimo of Chicago, calls it a Belmont, which is their own, I suppose I would say, uh, uh, name for it or signature for it. But what it really is, is a modified pork pie. And a pork pie was sort of popular, popularized, if I could use that word, uh, by jazz musicians uh, back in the day, in the 30s, 20s, uh, you know, during the golden or the jazz age. Uh, I forget the exact artist or the jazz musician he was who started wearing the pork pie. However, what it really is is a fedora, which is essentially turned inward. So just the brim is pushed inward and it creates this oval, which denotes it as a pork pie. But otherwise, when it's pushed out, it looks like a, re uh, a regular uh, fedora. However, these days, it's made just like this as a pork pie. Uh, it's, I suppose it's framed as a pork pie uh, and not as a, a fedora, which you can then bash yourself into a, pork, into a pork pie. So that's the Belmont. Now, here is something everyone knows. This is a Panama hat. Some would call it a straw hat or a Monte Cristi. Monte Cristi is a specific term for the type of straw that is used to make this hat, which is a very rare straw from Ecuador or Panama. This specific one was sourced from Panama. Most of my hats are from Optimo, and they use uh, nothing but the best materials. But this particular hat was uh, the straw that is was sourced uh, from Panama. And this is a true Monte Cristi, not Monte Cristo, a Monte Cristi. And this is about as fine as they get when you come to sort of the weave uh, that is used in making this hat. Uh, in a further segment, we'll go into some more detail to discuss the weave. I'm not a hat expert per se, 
but I know a little bit enough to talk about uh, the material um, with which uh, this is made. Now, the next is going to be a typical fedora. There was a time when every man wore a hat, and the fedora was the signature dress hat. It's called a dress hat. Uh, similar to the uh, Panama, it's shaped exactly like a Panama. The only difference, of course, is the fabric or the material with which it's made. So this is a summer, obviously, because it's a straw hat. It's a more casual summer. It's also more airy hat. This is a proper dress hat uh, to be worn during the fall season. Very often, uh, fedoras are made with fur. It could be rabbit, it could be elk, it could be deer, it could be whatever it is. But uh, this particular fedora is made by, it's called a silver belly. Uh, it's a special fabric that Optimo uses to make this, and it's called a silver belly. So that is your fedora. Pretty standard. Uh, it's just as classic as it gets. Uh, you might have seen movies uh, in the past, Al Capone, and so on and so forth, uh, uh, gangsters, and uh, of course, very well-dressed gentlemen as well. Cary Grant, uh, the list goes on. And they all donned fedoras uh, back in the day. This was standard issue for every gentleman. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the death of the hat, so to speak, uh, went the fedora. But true aficionados, of course, still had hair to the tradition of a proper uh, fedora. Now, here's a special one. This is called a humbug. It's a very formal hat. Now, the only hat which would be more formal like this than this, which I don't own, would be a top hat. And a top hat is a very formal hat that is worn with a morning dress uh, to very, very formal events. But short of very formal events, this uh, would work. The Homburg, you might have seen Winston Churchill back in the day. Churchill wore this a lot. So did a lot of diplomats and a lot of statesmen. And in fact, uh, this particular hat is called the Di Diplomatico, I believe, by Optimo, which is a name. Again, Optimo named this hat. But it is such a special hat. It's a very formal hat. Beautiful, very elegant. Uh, something like this you would wear with your tuxedo or dinner suit, even your morning dress if you wish, or other very, or stroller uh, if you're into that sort of dress. But it's uh, beautiful, 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 very versatile too. You will often see artists wear this as well. Uh, they might dress it down or sort of the dread, they might use it to dress up a casual outfit, but it's such a beautiful and versatile hat and it's called the Homburg. Put this down. Now, behind me is another fedora. Now, the difference between this fedora and this fedora, you might ask what the difference is. This is more casual. This is more formal or more dressy. And you can tell by the width of the brim. This has a wider brim. This has a shorter brim. This is about two and a quarter inch. This is about three inch brim. So the formality of the hat, again, sometimes can be dictated by the width of the brim. This is a short brim. It's still a Panama, but some call it a Milan, a Milan straw hat. Uh, for some reason, I'm not sure exactly where that name comes from, Milan, but it's called a Milan straw hat. It has a shorter brim. It's made from the same, uh, the same Monte Cristi straw from Panama, I believe, uh, from... Uh, from Panama, of course, from, or from Ecuador. Some get it from Ecuador. But it's made from the same quality straw. It's just sort of different. Now, here, I've accessorized it differently by using a brown ribbon to suggest that this is a more casual hat. The darker ribbon here suggests that it's a more formal hat. So again, there's so many things you could do with your hats. For instance, using the ribbon to step up or step down the formality of the hat. So that's your Milan or your casual Monte Cristi or Panama hat. Now, here is another fedora, very similar to the silver belly we just looked at, but this is made in elk, okay? Just a different skin or different fur. It's an elk in brown. Again, 
when you truly get into hats, as I did some years ago, uh, you will find that you will need a variety of hats uh, to complete your outfit. Very similar to shoes. Uh, once you get into shoes and you understand shoes, you understand that there are certain shoes and colors for specific occasions. So here we have an elk in brown, and these are typically used for tweeds or more autumn, fall autumn outfits, tweeds uh, and flannels in the fall, things of that nature. Uh, this is a bit brighter, and I use that for your, your navies and your gray suits, but this is typically something, it's a country color, of course, and this is something I use mainly uh, with my tweed jackets or tweed suits. Now, here's an interesting one. This is called a boda or a bota, if you're English. Uh, a bota is um, it's a formal hat, a formal in the sense that it's used for uh, formal events like boating events, uh, boating regalia. Uh, you will often see this one with a blue blazer, a traditional navy blazer, or a boating or boat stripe blazer. Um, very elegant, beautiful again, uh, often used by musicians, jazz artists. It just has sort of a certain snares to it. Uh, you wear it tilted to one side and we will look at how you wear this in a further segment but today we're just going to look at an overview of what these hats are. Again, it's uh, a border, it's, an, it's oval shaped, it's flat on top from the side, it's flat. Uh, the brim is very flat and sturdy, very rigid. You can't bend this and you can't shape it. It comes like this, you cannot bash the hat. It's just, this is the way it is. Typically it comes with a, either a, very, a midnight blue ribbon or some might do it with a striped ribbon. If you belong, say, to a certain club or regiment or fraternity, uh, some might use their fraternity colors to create a ribbon. I've seen this done in colorful ribbons, but very often, just keep it simple, and black or a dark midnight blue would just work. So that's your border. Now, we get into more casual hats. Here's an example of a casual hat. This is what you might call, or some would call a cap. This is what you might call a newsboy or a bicker boy cap. This is a very simple hat you could dress down with your, you know, bomber jacket uh, or casual dress. But that's about it. Uh, it's a very simple, it's sort of cut into six or eight dif different equal parts with a little button on top. Just very useful for your casual outfits. It comes in different variations, of course. There's one here in denim. Again, it's called a Baker Boy hat, or some will call it a Newsboy hat. Very similar. This is for the summer. That's done in tweed, and this is done in cotton denim. Here's another hat. This is, again, a very casual hat. Uh, this is, some would call this, well, some would call this a Newsboy, and some would call that a Baker Boy, but these are all used interchangeably, and you can call them what, whatever you want to call them. But they're all very, very casual hats. Now, let's talk about fabric. The key thing to bear in mind here is seasonality. We could go through all this and talk about the different uh, fabrics in detail and where they're sourced from and so on and so forth, but that, would, uh, that is uh, well beyond the call of this particular presentation. So we're just going to talk about fabric in general. Similar to clothing, uh, your fabric has to suit the specific climate or season. And so for summer, you're looking at light fabrics, you know, fabrics that are ventilate easily, that are allowed, that breathe well, uh, that allow you to be properly ventilated when the weather is very hot or very humid. And so for summer hats, for instance, straw would be a good fabric, right? Well, it is the only fabric really used uh, when it comes to Panama hats because it breathes 
Um, some of them are actually woven more openly like than this. It depends. I mean, it depends on, but there's some Panama hats that are woven more openly than this. But the idea is in the summer, you want something that is breathable because you want to ventilate your skull, of course. All these hats come with a sweatband. They all come with a sweatband. So when you sweat, ultimately or inevitably, the sweatband picks up your sweat. But more importantly, you do want to have some cross ventilation come through. And so in the summer, for your dress hats, you want to stick with straw. And of course, for your more casual hats, uh, we looked at the other, the, uh, the Baker Boy hat here. This is a cotton. It's a cotton hat. So again, cotton is something that breeds more easily. So in the summer, you want to stick to the cottons or linen. Uh, this is sort of a linen. This is a linen cotton blend. So in the summer, again, for your casual hat, you're looking at either cotton or a linen cotton blend. Now, for the winter season, or for the fall season, which is really when hats come into their own, because of course, you need to protect your head from the cold, which is the primary function of hats, actually, besides style, of course, you know, protecting your head from the cold, uh, somewhere, uh, beanie hats or all sorts of things over their heads that look actually quite atrocious. Uh, but a hat is just an elegant way to protect your head in the winter. And so for the winter, you're looking at more winter fabrics like this silver belly. Okay, it's a very, it's, it's an animal fur, right? So of course the fur protects the animal from the elements. So this is made from silver belly, which is from a specific type of animal. And so this is a perfect um, hat for, your, for the fall season. Very similar to this, this is also made from fur, rabbit fur, I mean, they use all sorts of fur, but uh, the furry hats um, are specifically designated uh, for the winter season. Now, let's talk about what's available in the, in the market. You know, where to buy them, the prices, are they handmade uh, versus ready to wear? Uh, what should you aim for? Now, where to buy them? There are a number of, there are any number of places you can buy hats. I mean, they're cheap hats, quite literally. Uh, cheap hats, and then they're really well-made handcrafted hats. So, depending on your budget, your taste, or your interest, um, some spend a lot of money on hats because it's just their thing. Uh, just like some spend money, you know, spend on other things, bespoke clothing, shoes, what have you. Um, but where to buy them? I'm going to talk about where I bought mine. And then, of course, I'm going to mention a few more names. But uh, their names like Stetson. These are household names. Borsalino, which is a very, very popular Italian name. Uh, and there are any number of names out there, but I'm going to talk specifically about my own hat collection and where I got them. Now, most of these hats you see here that I've looked at, the four to my left and uh, all of them to my, to my uh, behind me, with the exception of the Bota, were all procured from Optimo Chicago. Now, who is Optimo Chicago? Optimo Chicago, in my view, is the number one hat maker in the world, full stop. That title used to belong to Locke & Co, which is a British or London house based, I believe, either on St. James Street or Germain Street. This is a hat from Locke & Co. The border is from Locke & Co. You can see the insignia in there. It says Locke Hatters, London, I believe. It's uh, St. James Street, not Germain Street. St. James Street, okay? This is from Locke & Co. So are the casual hats. Now, let me explain. That also is from Lock & Co. Lock used to be the number one hat maker in the world. Uh, but like with most other things, uh, the market um, has gotten a lot more competitive and I believe they now outsource their making to somewhere in Asia. That is not to suggest it's bad quality. It's just not what it used to be. It's not the handmade hat that Lock used to make. Uh, perhaps 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago. And so what's occurred is that you've had a lot of new entrants into the market, niche players, and that is where players like Optimo come in. Optimo Chicago, owned by Graham Thompson, a very dear friend of mine. 
Graham bought the company, I believe, from you know, a gentleman who started the company or who's, you know, a family which had started the company. And what he's done is basically revamped the brand entirely. Uh, Graham is a true and true craftsman. Uh, all of these hats are made entirely by hand at Optimo's workshop in Chicago, completely handcrafted by, with the best materials on offer. No compromise. This is just absolute quality. When you talk about the Bentley or the Rolls Royce of hats, uh, you can't go wrong with Optimo. Of course, there are a number of other names. They're exhausted. I can't mention all of them. I don't know all of them. Uh, but most of my hats, personally, and this is not a plug for Graham, um, it's just my own experience. Uh, these hats have won well. You can look at the Monte Cristi, for instance. I used this thoroughly over the summer, traveled with it. You can see sort of the little bruises at the edges. And that is one of the beauties of, the, of uh, a hat is that uh, it looks better with age. It looks better with age when it's worn in. So, so Optimo Chicago is one place. Lock & Co, of course, is another place. All the hats I have here uh, actually were procured either from Optimo or from Lock & Co. But like I said, you have Stetson, if you like cowboy hats, 10-gallon hats, um, all sorts of eccentric hats. There's so many different hat makers. You know, just all you have to do is a Google search. How are they delivered? Uh, they're delivered in boxes. Um, in our next segment, we'll look at sort of one of the boxes, uh, which actually we can get into how you should actually store these hats because they're very delicate and they need to be stored properly. We'll also look at you know how you can bash them on your own. I don't bash my own hats. Uh, hats. I don't claim to be an expert. I have them bashed at the factory, at the workshop, and then when it requires maintenance, I send them to a professional who knows exactly what he's doing. We've looked at a very high-level overview of hats. We haven't gone into any specific detail. Uh, the point of this discourse today was just to look at a high level uh, overview of hats, why you should wear hats in my view, they complete an outfit. Uh, they are sort of, in my view, an underutilized accessory, which you ought to take uh, full advantage of. So here we are, uh, the prof. What's the prof wearing today? All ask OQ, of course. Uh, this is our signature Asco key uh, jacket or suit, as it were, and trousers. So uh, it's a classic Asco key trousers, uh, classic high-rise trousers, pleated, of course, beautiful. And I'm wearing it with a jacket, an Asco key jacket, a classic jacket uh, made from the same cloth. Uh, just a simple, beautiful, elegant, one-button uh, jacket, uh, which course is part of this suit. The fabric is a beautiful Irish linen. Uh, it's very rare that you see Irish linen done in a gun club, but I was so fortunate to uh, find this fabric, which was sort of a, a last bolt from an, a, an old lawyer in London who was retiring and getting rid of some of his old cloth. So I was fortunate enough to grab this, but it's a cloth from Hunters of Brora, which is a Scottish meal. Um, so that's what we're wearing, the shirt, of course, is an Ascoki shirt, a simple white shirt, clean white shirt with fabric or sort of the cloth, uh, the shirting from Calo River. Of course, everything we do has to be absolute premium. And so the cloth or the fabric for this shirt is a beautiful voile. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's a voile cotton from Calo River, which is an Italian meal, which in my view, my opinion makes the best shirtings ever. Second being Alumo of Switzerland, but Caloriva number one, and we only use Caloriva. Well, we don't only use Caloriva for our shirts, but uh, typically for those who demand nothing but the best, uh, we recommend the Caloriva shirt. And of course, I'm um, wearing a beautiful uh, tie. It's just sort of a wine tie, very subtle pattern tie. Um, to go with the outfit. It's quite, uh, let's say, an exuberant suit. 
And so the idea is to quieten down everything else by keeping everything else tame. A white shirt, a very subtle tie, and burgundy, very dark burgundy, almost eggplant shoes, which pick up the burgundy in the tie, uh, if you can see it closely. Um, and a beautiful, nice, wine pocket square. Again, I've gone for just sort of a very subtle look everywhere else because in my view uh, the suit itself or the fabric for the suit speaks volume so uh, it's all about balance it's all about balance you want to sort of keep things balanced if you're wearing a very very stage suit uh, you have the license to play around with accessories but if you're wearing an exuberant suit such as I have on today, uh, then you want to do the opposite and balance it out by taming down or tamping down the accessories. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for this uh, introductory session on hats. And uh, in the next segment, we'll be going into a little, more, a little bit more detail about how to care for the hats, how to store them, and we can even, we're even going to talk about, uh, get a bit deeper into the specifics of the construction of the hats. That's it for today. Thank you again for watching. Uh, remember uh, to follow us on Instagram, Askoki IG. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Askoki slash or YouTube slash Askoki Inc. And of course, uh, we welcome you to our Discord community, uh, which uh, you will find the link to uh, on our landing page of our Instagram. And of course, our website, uh, www.askoki.com, where you will find our web shop and you will find all these amazing goodies waiting to be custom made or to be bespoken by your very good self. Thank you for joining me and goodbye.